Good morning, you guys. Welcome to the Cone Phone. It's Saturday morning, I think. Tomorrow is Easter, I'm pretty sure. And the 49ers still exist. They're going to be making some draft picks soon. They've made some signings. My question to you is, are the Niners better than last year? I know they still have to go through the draft, but really the Niners don't often get instant contributors in the draft. They like to sort of fill their needs in free agency. And I think with the signing of Brock Wright, assuming he's going to be the Niners' next number two tight end, it seems like they've pretty much addressed all of their immediate needs. And in the draft, they can maybe they can get a returner, maybe a DB who can play right away, but there's not a lot of open spots on this team. So this is it. Assuming Brandon Ayuk comes back, is the team better? Let's go through it. I'd really like to hear your opinion. If you want to uh, call in, the link is in the description. The link is in the chat box. I'm going to go through it quickly. Well, not so quickly. On offense, they only added two players. Three. Brandon Parker, right tackle. Josh Dobbs, quarterback. And Brock Wright, assuming the Lions don't match the offer sheet. Doesn't look like they will. Is the offense better? Brandon Parker, instead of Matt Pryor, is the backup right tackle. Is that better? Yeah, maybe it's a little bit better, although Brandon Parker really hasn't played the last couple of years. Uh, Josh Dobbs, is he better than Sam Darnold? I think so. I actually do think so. I like that addition. I don't know that the Niners think so. Like When John Lynch spoke about it, he was like, well, he'll, he'll compete with Brandon Allen. We'll see. I think he's better than Brandon Allen. And then Brock Wright seems better than Charlie Warner. So did the Niners upgrade on offense? I mean, they got three backups who are better than the backups they had last year. So that is an upgrade, slightly. On defense, they cut Eric Armstead, who still is good when he's healthy, but the thing is he hasn't been healthy in two years and he has plantar fasciitis and he's probably never going to be healthy again. So instead of him, they got Malik Collins who is just as productive as a pass rusher and plays more. Is that an upgrade? Probably. I mean, if Armstead didn't have plantar fasciitis, then no. But Armstead plus that injury, which is chronic, I think I'd rather have a defensive tackle who didn't have a chronic foot injury. That's just me, though. Then Jordan Elliott, is he better than Javon Kinlaw? I mean... Maybe that one's a wash. I haven't seen Jordan Elliott play that much. I've, pl- I've seen Kinlaw play a lot. Um, I think that one's about a wash. Leonard Floyd, is he an upgrade over Chase Young? I have to say so. A significant one. And not just as a pass rusher, but you can also drop him into coverage and sort of allows the Niners to do those simulated pressures that are all the rage on defense now, where you don't really know where the four-man rush is coming from. Is he dropping? Is he, is he uh, rushing? I like Leonard Fliff. Chase Young can't do that stuff. Um, Devondre Campbell. Is he an upgrade over Oren Burks? Yeah, I think he probably is. Oren Burks was a special teamer, in my opinion. A number four linebacker. The the issue is, is Dre Greenlaw coming back? Without him, they're not better. But what were they going to do? He'll come back eventually. So... Then they added Isaac y- uh, Yadam to their defensive backfield. He had one good year. He doesn't make it worse. So I think you could actually argue that the Niners are a little bit better on paper than they were last year. Now, if Eric Armstead plays 17 games and has 10 sacks, then no. But I don't see that happening. I feel like Eric Armstead is going to really disappoint the Jaguars and Trent Baalke. I'm not sure what they're expecting. Probably a lot. They might be a little bit better on paper than they were last year. They're awfully similar. Um, it's hard to see where they definitely downgraded. I didn't even mention Yatur Gross Matos. Is he better than Randy Gregory or Cleveland Farrell? Is he better than Cleveland Farrell? How about that? I think he could be better than Cleveland Farrell in the sense that Farrell was good against the run, but didn't do anything as a pass rusher, and he couldn't move to the inside like Gross Matos can or Charles Amenehu could, or Arden Key could. So I think that's an upgrade. Um, and that's about it. 
Ezekiel Turner and Chase Lucas, they're special teams guys. I don't have an opinion. But uh, T. Bizzle for Shizzle does. T. Bizzle. What's up, Grant? What's up, T. Bizzle? How you doing? Good, man. Uh, before the season started, I told you a couple of things. I said, number one, I was concerned about Steve Wilkes. Number two, I didn't think Trent Williams was as important to the offensive line um, as a lot of other people thought. And number three, I thought that there was a potential for Brock Purdy to be very good. Uh, mm. And I made a comparison between him and uh, Drew Brees. And mm. you thought that was hilarious. But well, then several do. people in the national media, several people in the national media made the same comparison throughout the year for, to Drew Brees. Yeah. Uh, but I was wrong about Trent Williams uh, because what I didn't realize was how important he is to running to the left side. Yeah. Uh, and, and and that was obvious this year. Uh, yeah, you take him out, then was, where are they running? Right. Uh, yeah. But I was also right. right about Steve Wilkes. Yeah. <laughs> We're not right. Yeah. Uh, well, you can't run to the right either way without him, yeah. with with or without him. But um, but I was right about Steve Wilkes, and that's why the the turnover on the roster. Eh, we might be a little bit more dependable. We might be a wash. We might have a little bit less of a a, ce a high ceiling um, sure. with the turnover roster. But getting rid of Steve Wilkes, because in my opinion, he was a disaster. Uh, and I think we should be better just because we have a better defensive scheme going forward, I think. Why do you think he was such a, a disaster? Um, yeah, well, I talked to you about this after the uh, the Packers game in the playoffs. I asked you what you thought he was doing. And uh, the the way the cornerbacks were lining so far off the ball um, didn't seem to be the way you would run that defense, especially with our uh, defensive line, and we should have good pass rush. Uh, I think what you would what you prefer to do would be more of a press. Um, now, I'm not an X's and O's guy. I, I don't know a ton. I'm more of just a, a guy that likes to play and likes to watch. But just with the results we saw, that defense got torched quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I know at the end of the year, the points per game still was pretty good. But just all year long, you kind of felt like, man, this defense is underperforming. Um, and, and maybe maybe also he's just not as charismatic of a guy either. You know, it's hard, probably hard to get super pumped up and go play really hard for a guy who's kind of slow talking, soft, you know. Yeah, effort was an issue. But then also, like, the pass rush was an issue. And they have too much invested in that D-line for the pass rush to be an issue. His, it seemed like his pressure schemes weren't anything special. Uh, I can't remember any blitz that he ever drew up or called where you thought, wow, that was amazing. And then the coverages, it seemed like they were pretty clear. Good quarterbacks knew exactly what they were seeing against the Niners defense. Burrow, Cousins, didn't really look like he was disguising his coverages at all, which is something D'Amico and Sala did do. So I don't know. I don't understand why they hired Steve Wilkes in the first place. It seemed like there were a lot of issues. He did, you know, decently with a lot of good players, but. Why did they think that was a good idea? Okay, sure, whatever. That's old history. He's gone. Now you got Brandon Staley, who seems to be able to like, he's smart, right? I don't know if he can lead players, but he seems like he could probably scheme up a lot of the stuff that's trendy on defense these days. Uh, and then you got Nick Sorensen, a guy who the players like. So maybe that's a better setup. I think we can only go up. I think as yeah. far as what you could get out of that defense with that roster is like, Wilkes was pretty bottom of the barrel. It was like uh, uh, Richard Sherman said something about like, you know, it's a Ferrari. It doesn't matter who you put behind the seat of the wheel. It's still going to run well, to, referring to our defense. And uh, it was like, well, it's still, they weren't driving that Ferrari very well. So I got to think that we're, the defense is going to perform better this year. I would think so. I would think so. Uh, I mean, Bosa wasn't great last year. Hargrave wasn't great last year. The secondary was pretty good. I mean, the two corners played really well, but I don't know. Without Greenlaw, though, that's kind of that's an issue for me. I feel I still feel like they need to address the linebacker spot, and that Campbell isn't necessarily the the answer. Well, when we're team. talking about the defense, we're kind. Of, I'm, personally, I was kind of assuming like when Greenlaw's back, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, T Bizzle. Yes, sir. All right. Have a good one. Uh, again, if you guys want to call in, links in the description. There's no one waiting right now. You guys could be the next one. What are you, what are you doing? I got it. Brunch? I'll just go through the chat for a little while. Um, Mark Mick says, you can't lose in the Super Bowl and expect the team to be better. 
they might know the rule this year at least. Yeah, they seem like they're probably more prepared in terms of rule knowledge. Travis says the Niners are not going to win the Super Bowl until they actually invest in the O-line, get better depth at corner, and get a real difference maker at quarterback. Oh, shots fired at Brock Purdy at 10.20 a.m. On the, on the West Coast. What did Purdy do? Shannon Dale says, hi, George. No, we are not. Can McCaffrey run to the right, or are we going to do, uh, just do the same old left running game? Defenses will be more ready for this unreal. Well, they got Brock right. They have a better backup tight end. Their offense is going to be way different. Don't you understand? This guy says, won't really know if the Niners are better until the season starts. Shrug. Thanks a lot, this guy. Emilio O says, Niners just lost Steve Young to the Vikings. How can any team be better after such travesty? Who we got? Bob got a call in. Been a minute. Yeah, brother Bob, you got to call in. Someone needs to call in. Link O says, Niners won't win a ring until captain can't call a ball game, gives up the offensive. What? I don't think we are better, Grant. As a matter of fact, I... Uh, think we took a step back really because of armstead is that is that what it comes down to steve o says plugged holes and kyle is still head coach so no next call okay uh is ray race on the team no what do you think they will do for the offensive line all draft i don't know they signed brandon parker which kind of makes me scared that the niners aren't going to draft an offensive tackle yet again that guy was the 65th pick in the draft. And he's kind of exactly what they're looking for in a right tackle. Tall. Light. Why do the Niners always want an offensive tackle who's a glorified tight end? Six foot eight, 295 pounds. If you are 312 pounds, they're like, that is way too hefty for our right tackle. I don't understand what that's about. Am I wrong? They always want the, the skinniest dude, the tallest, lankiest dude at right tackle. And the guy can never hold up to a bull rush. Brett Osborne, who's afraid to call in, says no updates, no upgrades were made at any position that is going to have an impact. What we did get was cheaper without suffering a significant drop-off. That's true. That is true. Niner gang. What's up, man? What's up, Grant? How are we doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Man, it's Saturday down here in Fresno. We got some sun today instead of that rain. Looks like it's nice. Awesome. Finally. Man. Nah, man, but these Niners, man, I don't. I don't think they got any better, man. Reason being is we're going to go in with the same exact offense we finished the Super Bowl with. Yep. Meaning same offense we had all season. Meaning every defense out there has a full season of tape on yep. our complete offensive line. Kyle's scheme, which we all know he tweaks it a tiny bit, not much. And to, you know, the last caller's point or all the chats, if they don't work on that line, it's going to be the same thing. They know defense has tape to study how to attack that offensive line, which is everybody knows it's no secret through the right side, but now it's just strictly focus. That's it. All you do is take Trent Williams out of the game on the line and it's over. Force Brock to run a certain way. You know, he's going to scramble out of the pocket and call it what it is. And he's going to go down, man. He's going to not like get hurt, but he's going to get sacked, you know, but they've overhauled their defense. They got rid of Steve Wilkes. They brought in Brandon Staley. They got rid of Eric Armstead. They brought in Malik Collins and Leonard Floyd. Like that defense is going to carry them to the, to the, the, the championship right and, and, and that's fine it may it may very well get them there to their point i get the sarcasm with it it may very well get them there but we all know super bowls do i mean uh defenses do not win super bowls we've we've seen that we've seen yeah. that they don't call holding on either team yeah so it's yeah. like i don't understand the point there get a mediocre defense one that could you know hold it down to 25 points or so but you got to get an offense that can match you know and I was over there listening to to coach and uh, Krug a minute before I dropped in on yours. And so they said, you're not going to beat Patrick Mahomes with Brock Purdy. No shame on Brock. Brock's good, but he's not Patrick. So how are you going to beat the Chiefs? You're going to have to run the damn ball down their throat. And you're not going to do it with Christian McCaffrey solo. You have a stable of running backs, Jordan Mason, Elijah Mitchell, which half the time I don't even know if they're on the team. You know, and we continue to go with CMC. He's great. But at some point, you know, when they when a team is strictly planning to stop one man, get the man out of there. Put the man somewhere else. Adjust your game. But Kyle doesn't do that. And once again, Kyle not adjusting will be the reason 
the Niners don't succeed again. I kind of got to disagree a little bit about the run game. It's like if you're going to spend $60 million on wide receivers, at a certain point you got to pass the ball. I mean, you like Brandon Ayuk, you like Debo Samuel, you like Brock, Brock Purdy. I know he's not Patrick Mahomes, but he was just an MVP candidate. I don't know that you're necessarily going to beat the Chiefs just feeding Christian McCaffrey. I mean, uh, Dave Merritt said it like he needs help. He needs help. And you have all these weapons that you're paying all this money for. And it just seems like if you would get a couple more offensive linemen, you could tie it all together and truly have an all time great offense without necessarily the best quarterback in the league. But they don't have that. And they're still trying to win with their defensive line, their defense, which is just surprising, but not surprising at the same time. No, it is. And I think Christian's good. And my point is saying they're going to, only way they're going to be able to beat the Chiefs you know, is going to need a run game is because you got to be balanced we, for sure. We, we don't have the line to your point to hold up against a, a overwhelmingly good defensive line to give yeah. them enough time to allow these weapons to open up. That's why with the whole BA thing or re-signing him, I don't think it's worth it for the Niners to re-sign him. Why? Because they don't go to him enough. Right. They don't utilize him enough. He's fourth, fifth on the depth chart. I mean, damn, there's games when Jawan Jennings gets as much targets as him. They throw the ball less than every other team in the league. Like the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh are going to be similar. They're not going to throw the ball that much. So the first thing he did this offseason was get rid of both of his wide receivers. Like, you guys are good players. We're not paying for that. We're not going to utilize you to your full extent. So what are we going to do? Cut you. Trade you. Kyle's problem is, though, like Debo, he, he, that's his buddy. That's Their why friend. he's getting what he's getting, you know? And yeah, he didn't. Pre- he got 11, 12 targets in the Super Bowl and just looked horrible in it. You know, whether he was hurt or not, whatever, that's still on the coach because if he's hurt, you need to understand that and go somewhere else with the ball. Stop trying to feed the guy that can't catch the damn ball, number one. Can't run a route if his life's dependent on it. You know, use Debo, give him the, use him for what you paid him for. Line him up in the damn backfield. Make the defense decide if it's going to Christian or Debo because you're not going to use Mason like that. So you might as well use Debo like that, right? Put Juwan Jennings back out there on the field. Put Kyle Hughes check on the sideline. And let this thing rip, but they won't because why? Kyle is buddies with Hughes Check. He's buddies with Debo. He's buddies with Kittle. So he's just going to continue to keep this same insanity going on, is what I call it. Because when you keep doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, that's a that's a definition of insanity, in my opinion. And that's what we're going through right now with Kyle Shanahan. Yep, agree, man. Thanks for calling in. Good stuff. Great, Appreciate you, day, buddy. All right, have a good one. Uh, Brother Bob is indeed next. Uh, Charlie Price says, will special teams guy become more important due to kickoff changes? Yeah, I would agree. I think he is. Richard Gonzalez says, I think everything is a wash and we're pretty much the same team that we were last year. Uh, Stygon says, look at how fast our offensive line collapsed the pocket during the playoffs. JM617 says, Wilkes got bailed out by talent a lot. Emiliano says, Wilkes in defense held Mahomes to under 20 points in the Super Bowl without Greenlaw. His Niners defense was third in the NFL in scoring defense, so how is that a disaster? I would have to agree with that. Could have been worse. Glad Armstead's gone. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. The offense underperformed. JM617 says, Wilkes Super Bowl losing effort doesn't forgive the rest of the year, just like Chase Young. Okay. All right. Let's see what Brother Bob has to say. <laughs> What's going on, Grant? How you doing, man? Holy shit. <clears throat> oh, yeah. It was a good time. But yeah. uh, by the way, it's Iglet. I love that name, Iglet. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you can call me Iglet, I suppose. I appreciate it, sir. <laughs> so let's talk about you open up with a lot of questions. Are we better at different mm-hmm. positions? And I've been thinking about that since we lost and the uh, you know free agency started. And, I, <clears throat> and I'm gonna say this, I don't have as much energy as I normally do. I've got this little cold again. Okay. But I don't I don't see us being better. In fact, I see us probably being the same, but as you know, they say either you're you're getting, getting better, better getting worse. worse. Right. You can't say the same. Can't say the same. Exactly. Mm. So are we going to, and I hate to be negative like this, Yeah. but I have to be honest with myself, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, looking at that Montana jersey back there, and during his time, Walsh was always trying to get better, right? Yeah. I don't see that with this team. So let's look at the recent signing, right? All right? Let's start with offense. All right, my guy from Notre Dame, my alma mater, Okay, Brock Wright. But is he really better than Warner? Doesn't really or matter. Or is he just a, re- a replacement? 
Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I think are you just, trying to get better? Or are you trying to stay the same? Are you trying to stay the same? They've been kind exactly. of trying to stay the same since 2019, haven't they? That's my point. Exactly right. my point. Yeah. Because he's not going to use Brock uh, right as some type of second pass catcher. He's going to replace Warner and just be a blocking yeah. tight end. That's it. Yeah. Give and and if you really think about four it, targets a season, yeah. yes, put him on Literally, special teams. That's what Warner yeah. had. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He was three for three though. Three <laughs> targets, three receptions. <laughs> He had it, Warner actually had a better, uh, slightly better average uh, per catch You're than, right. than Brock Wright. You're right. It was it was three targets. I, I overshot yeah. that one. It was two the season before. <laughs> it's <that>. all good. <laughs> so my point yeah. is, he's just replacing him, and he's going to run the same offense over and over again. Which hey, it got us to the Super Bowl, but mm -hmm. the problem is, it didn't win us the Super Bowl. And that's what I'm concerned nope. about. That's what I'm concerned about. Now, other people are going to talk about, let's talk about BA. You got to keep BA. You just have to. Yeah. And I don't care about this whole, well, you're going to have a receiver room that's 50 plus million. No, you really won't. I mean, yeah, AVV, they will be, all right? Average. Right, right, right. But an actual cap, right. you can stagger that. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you're exactly. not spending anything on quarterbacks. So it evens out. Exactly. Right? But, if you don't have B.A., what are you going to do on offense? Because he had the most receptions out of all the receivers. Right. right. So oh, you need him. Who's going to fill up? Who's going to fill that? like Debo? Kittle? Right. A rookie? <laughs> Probably not. No. No. Right. And also, you know, it's so clear what they want to do is stay the same on offense. So they're not going to trade Brandon Ayuk because that would involve changing. Right. Which they don't want to do. They did that on defense because it was all the defense's fault. And that's what I'm getting to next. Yeah. I don't think the defense has gotten better, but here's the thing. You can't blame Wilkes anymore, but yep. was it the defense that really lost us that game in the Super Bowl? And I don't want to focus on one game. I mean, special teams had a big hand in it. Offense had a big hand in it. It seems like of all the, the phases, defense actually did the best in that one game. I would have to agree. Right. So, but you know what Kyle is going to do. He's yeah. not going to focus on his side of the ball. He's going to focus and. You know, shift blame and point the fingers exactly. at the other side. Right. So, but have we gotten better on defense? I don't know. It, it's yeah. tough. I think it's about literally the same. Is uh, I forgot the one guy uh, replacing Ken. Long. I like the Leonard Floyd addition, but still, he's like 32. So we'll see. But I do like that addition. And frankly, I'm not mad at him for moving on from Armstead. I know Armstead got mad, but it's like your injury is really serious, man. It's not going away. I. I but do they get better? Yeah. Like, how good is Malik Collins really? I don't know. And there you go. Yeah. So the interior of the our uh, D line, I think, has been the biggest problem. Yes, we needed mm -hmm. someone opposite uh, Bosa, but we saw what happened. Teams started to run on us and run on us at will. Yeah. And that's what my concern is: have we gotten better in the middle? So you got Hargrave, but he was eh, average, I guess. Yeah. But I guess run. Collins seems to me like kind of built the same. I, I, I'm sort of expecting. A similar player to Hargrave. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then look at our linebackers. That's a problem with Greenlaw. I mean, I don't, I don't think we can count on him. Did you hear what Lynch said about Campbell? Yeah, I did. Good against the pass. Solid against the run. He said, it was like, oh, so another guy who's, so how are you going to stop the run this year? Right. Yeah. And I don't think that was that good against the pass. <laughs> I don't think so either. That's debatable. Maybe three years ago he was. Well, you know, he has to say that because he lost out on uh, Kendricks. Kendrick. Kendricks, right. Yeah, when he was going through his free agency, he was like, yeah, linebacker. Well, we lost out on Kendricks, and we were kind of screwed. But then Campbell got cut at the last minute, and we like him. Like, ugh, yeah. Yeah. We like him a lot. Because <laughs> he's our only option. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and now looking at the, the DBs. Now, I like what our DBs showed last year. It kind of went down the run game, I noticed, when Huff went down. But for whatever reason, they are not, again, of course, Huff's coming back from ACL. Don't know what he's going to be like. He may be even slower than he was. Yeah. Funny. But they seem to want to move on from him. Have you heard anything inside as to why that you can disclose? Um, okay, good question. I think it probably would be financial. I think they feel that maybe Huff could get a lot of money. He was an all-pro. And I don't think they want to spend a ton of money on a safety. They haven't. 
even though their general manager is John Lynch. They haven't really spent big at that position. And uh, I think, yeah, I mean, what do you think? Well, to me, I just find it very odd. Maybe it is money, but you got a guy who produced and could at least help out in the run game, which has been a problem lately, telling in the season. And then you've got a guy that, yeah, he made some problems in coverage, but he knows the system. If, and it seems like we're keeping the same system. So I just, I don't know. I just find that well, very... My question is, who uh, drafted Hafunga? Who was the big advocate for him? Was it D'Amico? Was it Adam Peters? Was it someone who's not here anymore? Because yeah, now they're I like, we're, we're multiple defensive coordinators away, and maybe someone's just like, I, it's not my type of strong safety. Well, I mean, but see, you can't trade him. Where are you going to get from him? Trading low, right? I mean, he's or maybe they're worried about his recovery from a torn ACL. Maybe they're thinking, hey, you know, he was good, but he had some limitations and he wasn't fast. And coming off of this injury, like, what's he really going to be? You know, no, that is maybe that maybe some of that. Yeah. See, now if it's that, that's fine. But the way that they're talking about it, they're not using that that language. Hey, we have no. to take precautions because he's injured. He's coming back from a gruesome injury. They're not right. saying it like that. No. So I think you might be right. I think it is money. So it could be money. Yeah. Cause I think when they traded, when they drafted uh Jair Brown, it was anticipating like we're not gonna be able to afford Hafunga. We're gonna extend Ayuk, but maybe not him. So we gotta be prepared. And they're very similar. But extremely let's talk about money. Because yeah. I think you asked the best question at the owners meeting, and I was very disappointed with Jed York's uh response. And I know you and your father, Papa Cone, went over this. But <clears throat> when I hear Jed and his parade called the 80s Niners lemonade stand, and then when I hear Jed say, well, you know, my Uncle Eddie had the uncapped years, it just sounded like me, like the biggest excuse uh, maker in the world. Yeah. Now, okay, yes. Eddie did have one year cap and won a Super Bowl. But let's not forget, other teams during that era had no caps either. Right. Let's not forget that Eddie also lost during that time. Uh, in the yeah, Jed made it season. seem like the Niners were the only team that didn't have a salary cap. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there were some other – I know you got other college probably, but there's some other great teams during that, that uh, those years. The Green Bay Packers, the, obviously the Cowboys – and what is it? Are you trying to taint all the other teams that won Super Bowls during that time? Yeah. So what happens, Jed, now? What about all the teams that have won Super Bowls since the implementation of the cap, including the 94 Niners? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you trying to say that you just can't do what they did? Yeah. Let's just be honest here. You're not built as your main goal for winning a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. I think he's built for maximizing profits. Right. And I wish he just would have just... You know, not, not given the answer that he gave because it pretty clear, at least to me, it came yeah. pretty clear what he really wanted to do is just make profits. And he's making profits. Yeah. He gives him some every excuse. Like, you can't expect any team to be dominant in this era. So all you can really strive for is sustainability and consistency. And we've achieved that. And the only reason we're not champions is because it's random. And eventually we will be. So we're going to act like we are. Right. Yeah. So my next question to you, were there other reporters around when you asked that question? Because it looked like you may have caught them alone. There were seven of us. It was and, me, Matt Mayoko, oh. Jennifer Lee Chan, Nick Wagner, Tracy Sandler, David Lombardi, Jeez. Eric Branch. Okay. Did anyone else give a follow-up? Because I listened to the whole thing. Was there any follow-up questions similar to yours? Because I didn't hear that. Uh, at the end of the session, one of them said, you know, you mentioned that you've kind of like matured a little bit. Like, Eddie wasn't like that. How do you sort of explain the difference between you two? And that's when he was like, well, you know, Eddie didn't have a salary cap and it wouldn't help us win if I broke my hand by punching a wall. And I, I, I'm so much more mature than that. Like, mm -hmm, cool. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. my follow up question, and I'm not blaming you or anyone else. But I would have said, okay, so Jed, since you did say that winning a Super Bowl is your goal, what 
are you going to do to achieve that goal? What things are you planning to put in place to achieve that goal? I get it. You don't want to be emotional like Eddie, but Eddie being emotional achieved his goal five times. That's right. So what do you want to do or what are you planning to do to achieve that goal? Yeah. I'm just curious. Are it you just trying to say like, Eddie was too emotional? Because it worked. Right. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're not emotional enough. It's, that's my point, yeah. you know? Yeah. So anyway, yeah. uh, appreciate it. I don't want to keep you much more of your time, and I got to get back to work here. I like to listen right. in and work. But uh, things going good with the pops? Things going great with the pops, man. Always. Good. All right, man. Remember that, man. I lost my father. Uh, he was only 65. And he's the reason why I'm in the football. I used to sit on his lap just watching footballs when I was a youngster. So it's good to see you and your pops still going at it and uh, doing what you do. So really appreciate it and really appreciate the, uh, the time that you give us on the call-in shows. Hey, can't stop. Won't, Won't stop. stop. <laughs> Are we still say that or is that canceled too? <laughs> That's I'm gonna need more. I'm gonna need more proof. All right. I'm way too invested in Diddy's entire career to just throw him under the bus over one allegation. So, uh, bro, you can't have the fans like all on your business like that. Like, just can kidding, you imagine walking outside? What and may, like, may or may not have done. I don't condone it. Don't condone. It's true. It. We're, we're, just allegations. But can you imagine walking out there? Yeah, just allegations. Can allegations. you imagine them walking out your house and <laughs> you see the fans and right there like, hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, I helped make life after death, okay? That was incredible. <laughs> Ready to die. That was me. You a fool. <laughs> See you, brother. See you, man, later. Hey. All right. NorCal Benny, you're next. But before you say anything about the Niners, you got to help me with some sleeper picks. Is that cool? Sleeper picks. We got to, man. We got to. Let's talk sleeper picks. And we're going to do baseball because you're from NorCal. You have an opinion. I, I can do. tell. You gonna watch the Giants today? I don't have cable. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Matt Chapman. Let's start with him. He had a home run last night. He, he looks pretty good so far. He's hot. You got the Giants hat on. I do. So you're not gonna watch the game, but you're gonna you know represent and support vicariously from where you are. I yep. respect it. So what do you like with Matt Chapman? He's gonna have a hit tonight. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's do more. I'm trying to just go simple stuff because I always lose. How about Solaire? He stinks. No. No hits for Solaire? Does he have any? Yeah, he had a couple last night. He actually. One last night. Yeah. Did he have one hit tonight? Sure. I don't know, man. You need to tell me the answer because we're going to split the winnings. Me and you. We're not going to win. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> How about yes on the I'm, I'm a big Solaire guy. I could tell you you're confident. The reason I ask you is because you're wearing a hat. Okay, one more. You're just shutting down on me. I need you I'm to help waiting me. Waiting for questions, Grant. How about Tatis? He had two He's hits last night. He's a free. One more. Yeah. I feel like baseball, we can win these. These three guys are getting hits in this game. I, there's no question about it. We're gonna win. No doubts. There's no doubts. Machado? Should we get greedy? I'm not getting greedy. I'm not going to get greedy. Three. I want to win this. Three guys to get hits in this game. Valer, Chapman, Tatis, locking it in. Trying to win my second sleeper pick. Boom, there it is. I need to start doing parlays because I have a sports book available to me, like where I work. <laughs> and you need I don't. To start getting on sleeper because when you, uh, if you use promo code CONE, C O H N, you get that deposit match up to $500. I'm Look just throwing it out. Plug right there. That was beautiful. That was, that just... was good, right? That was absolutely good. Okay. Thank you very much, sleeper. If I win, I'll let you guys know because I'm going to gloat. NorCal Benny G, what's on your mind? Well, you, I mean, Diddy's been a bad boy for life, so <laughs> and he did say that. He has been he saying that. He admitted sure. it a long time ago, so that we can't really close, be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's on my mind today? Well, happy Easter, all that good stuff. Easter weekend. Whoop whoop to all the listeners. Whoop whoop. And, oh, I had a question. Is there a kicker we're taking in the first or second round this year? Probably that'd be a stretch. No, I think it could happen. Maybe right. third. Maybe the third round? Yeah. But it's a comp pick. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> are we better? Um, I don't know if we're better. I think we have more questions than we did last year. I think getting Armstead out of there is important because we need availability over 18. What was it? 26 million or something he was going to cost this year? Something crazy. Million against the cap. Yeah, that's he's, too, take, he's not Aaron down, Donald. Home about he's, 17 he's million not, cash. You can't do that. No. Um, they've been looking at a lot of safeties, I think, which I'm surprised we haven't tried to bring in another veteran like we did a few years ago at Gibson, just to know that, you know, they like having a safety blanket, it seems like, with the older vet. But you lose a step when you have the older guys, obviously. But yeah. I don't know. Offensive line is still pretty scary. I mean, I like McKivitz. His story's good. He's been a Niner since day one, and they've, you know, developed him. But is he going to stop the premier pass rushers in key moments? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. I mean, not. I'm just looking at sysdatahub.com, uh, and he gave up 13 sacks last year. 13. Which is, I if you can do league. math, that's almost one a game. I don't see how you roll with that. Can't you no. do better? Yeah, you should be able to do better. Um, no right tackle in the league, league gave up more sacks than Colton McKivitz. Like Really? Andrew that Wiley was, was number two. Uh, he gave up 11. I, I, how do you say you like that? I mean, nothing against McKivitz, but how is that the best you could do? McGlinchey gave up eight. And we ran him out of town. But look how much yeah. money he got paid. It was he insane. got 13. I mean, I... I'm sorry. Was that Mc, was that uh, McGlinchey from this year in Denver? He only gave up eight, or when eight he was in Denver. Up? Eight okay. in Denver. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And you know, McKivitz, he was only he only had 538 pass blocking yeah. snaps. The Whoa. Niners don't pass. <laughs> That's still why they're 15. halfway okay with him. I think because yeah. I think think if they were a passing team, would he give up 20 plus a year if they drop back in the top five? And had the top five pass attempts. Great. Now I will say, according to SysDataHub uh, dot com, which I don't know who's garden who's grading this stuff. They really do like McKivitt as a run blocker. I gotta say. Well, it they didn't do, look which, like which the surprises did me last because year. they never run to the right. Yeah, but, never. Is. Never. You know. So I do know. But they have him as one of the top run blocking offensive linemen in the league, which is just wow. That's really interesting. That That's is interesting. interesting. But it did seem like when they would surprise people and run to the right, they could make some yards from time to time. It just never happened. It seemed like when they when they would have success, running to the right was like runs that started to the left and McCaffrey would cut back. Counters, yeah. Yeah, cut like back. when they would actually like outside zone to the right, those were a lot of <laughs> <laughs> runs yeah. for losses. He has yeah. such good vision. It's really been fun to watch McCaffrey play. Since he's been a Niner, he's yeah, like he's really, really, really good. He's I really love quite Frank good. Gore, and Frank Gore was the GOAT Niner to me, but like Christian McCaffrey's insane. <laughs> insane. Um, yeah, Frank Gore was pretty great too, though. Frank the Tank he just, he couldn't do any of the receiving stuff that McCaffrey could do, but in terms of like vision, and I mean, his center Gore of gravity just, was so too. low, and he just Gore? kept moving. Yeah. yeah, did he get to those tiny little, tiny little holes? And just squeeze through him. He was like what five eight or something. He was he's five eight, not five nine, two fifteen. Dude. Yeah, he was. So big. I have one quick question before I let you go. Sure. So I have a, a pops who's older as well, and I've noticed that we've gotten way tighter as I've gotten older and he's gotten older. Was it is it the same for you and your pops? Like with work? Definitely. Absolutely. I think it's kind of how much older than you is your dad. Uh, dad was 38 when I was born. Yeah. So. so my dad was 42. Yeah. That's a, it's, it's, as, as a, as a three-year-old, four-year-old, you, you're aware of the age difference and it feels like some, maybe sometimes it's a lot, but then as yeah. you get older, he, he gets into his sixties, seventies. I feel like you're kind of, they mellow out and you've more like equals equals and yep. it's different. Yeah. Yep. I know what you mean. It's a good but stage it, for sure. Yeah. It's a good stage. It's a good stage for sure. Well, good hey, call, man. Have a nice day. All right, NorCal Benny G, take care. That might be the last call of the day. We got no one else here. Although I'm, I'm, I'm here for the, another 10 minutes if someone wants to call in.
Um, Frank was a tank. CMC is elusive. They're both great. They're both great. Mm. I feel like Gore ran harder. I just can't get McCaffrey's Super Bowl performance out of my head. He was great on the first drive. He fumbled, and then I, I feel like he kind of was in safety first mode the rest of the game. Wasn't really scrapping and fighting for the extra yards. I think he was trying to protect the football, which is fine, but he wasn't that efficient as a running back. Like That was going to be his coordination as an all-time great running back, and it wasn't because he isn't. Is he? I don't think he is. As a receiver, they didn't go to him on any of the critical third downs. They went to Jawan Jennings. So how good of a receiver is he? Like, yeah, he's as good of a running back receiver can be, but he's not a go-to guy on third down. They tried to on that last third down of regulation, and he didn't get open quickly enough. How has the O-line improved? McKibbins is getting better. I'm so surprised that Sys Data Hub likes... I'm going to share the screen real quick and show you guys this. This is incredible. Share screen. This data hub. Okay. Have you ever been to this website before? It's interesting. It's just at datahub.com. It's like PFF, but it's free. And you go to leaderboards, offensive linemen, run blocking, run block points earned. Like, I don't know how to calculate that or how they do it. They don't say. But McKivitz is here. Look at the Niners. Like, he has a higher grade than Trent Williams. I don't know about that. Jake Brendel, also high. Spencer Burford, surprising. Trent Williams, <laughs> below Spencer Burford. I don't know. Aaron Banks. Now, do they have, do, they, do all four, five of these guys have high run blocking grades because they block for Christian McCaffrey? You tell me. But if we're trying to figure out reasons why the Niners like Colton McKibbins, maybe that's part of it. Now, when it comes to pass blocking, he's one of the worst. He didn't get negative points. But, um, yeah, let's look at the Niners where they rank in pass blocking. No one's here. No one's in the top. Okay, let's go to page two. Trent Williams. Okay. Aaron Banks, left side of the line. Jake Brendel. Okay. Spencer Burford. John Feliciano. And then Colton McKibbitz. Yikes. He's down there with people such as, well, Cam Irving, Storm Norton, Mike McGlinchey. They gave him a better grade than Mike McGlinchey. That is funny. <laughs> poor Mike. Oh, poor Mike. Well, Anthony. Anthony's going to be our last caller of the day. Anthony, how you doing? Hey, Grant. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Doing well. Um, I just kind of hopped on right now last minute. Are we just kind of talking about how they improve still, just to be sure? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Whatever you want to okay. talk about. No, I mean, like I said, um, when I called in during the after the Super Bowl loss, to this day, I still think no matter who they get, whether they were able to bring back John Randall in his prime, whoever on the D-line, they could bring back Dion as, as a corner. I truly think that in these prime situations, it doesn't matter who you have. It comes down to Kyle just blowing it, unfortunately, yeah. get, getting yeah. away from what, from what works for him. So if you ask me, did they improve? I think they did improve at stopping the run by getting a lot of bigger D-tackles and maybe switching up their defense, their defensive front and, and, and their line, but they still haven't really addressed to get a, a lockdown corner yet uh, on the mm. outside, which the pass, which the league is all gone to passing. Now you have to have a shutdown, two shutdown corners. At least look at Kansas city. They had two shutdown. You corners can't have any weaknesses in your secondary. None. Exactly. And yeah, I think Even nickel Kyle, has to be a shutdown corner. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I sometimes think that um, Lynch still lives back in the O2 buck era right. where he tries to build the defense through the D-line, and yeah. just have a mediocre, you know, I'm not going to say Brock Purdy's a, a game manager, but just someone who makes the throws that need to be made doesn't really right. throw for Transcend. Four, five, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I think they improved in that aspect, the run game, but there's still some holes on that defense. Um, I, I don't know if Hufung is getting traded or what's going on with that right now going mm -hmm. into the, the draft, but... Um, still you think, think they go matter. defense with their first pick? Man, you know what? I would like him to honestly go with right tackle as their first pick, but right. it doesn't doesn't seem like it's going to go that way. Uh -uh. Um, 
I could see them going defense, to be honest, but I could see them going with like a safety if they're not sure with Hufunga. You know, I think they would have signed someone by now as far as maybe like a Justin Simmons, but I, I haven't looked at their cap situation though too to see how much you know money they have remaining. But it's it's just hard to tell what they're going to do to be honest at this point. When when you think they when you think you know what they're going to do, they do something completely different, and it's it's pretty mind boggling sometimes. Yep. Yep. Well, we'll see what they do in the draft. Yeah. Seems like they think they got the team right now. We'll see if they're yeah. right. Yeah. All right, no. Anthony. Thank you, Grant. Appreciate it, man. All right. Take care. That's the show, guys. Thanks for uh, everyone participating, calling in. I know it's like nothing's going on right now and there's not a lot to talk about, so I appreciate you guys digging deep and sharing your opinions and your thoughts. So I'll be back uh, tomorrow or today. We'll see. I'm always here.